a young protagonist finds himself stuck in a huge house belonging to a cannibalistic family, desperately trying to find a way out. As he explores the house, he discovers disturbing secrets hidden by the family, which starts to slowly break him down mentally. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to the video. If you have any game or video suggestions, make sure to send them to me on my Twitter or subreddit. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers, and with that in mind, let's begin. The young protagonist drives a car he seems to have stolen from his drunk father. The car promptly breaks down in the middle of the road, however to his fortune or perhaps misfortune, he is approached by an elderly farmer with one arm who claims to be a mechanic and offers to tow off his car to his garage where he can fix it. The youngster unknowingly to what is about to happen agrees and is taken to the remote Tucker's farm which he finds quite boring at first. The elderly quickly laughs it off by claiming there is more to the farm than meets the eye and then he makes the young protagonist an irresistible offer to fix his car in exchange for fixing his wife's wardrobe and invites him to his house so that he may have a look at it. The young protagonist happily agrees as he mentions his father is a carpenter, therefore he has a good idea on how to fix it. Walking towards the house, the protagonist and the old man are being observed from afar by someone breathing heavily. The protagonist is led to a room where the old wardrobe stands when he gets warned that he should keep the door shut because the wife of the old man can be a little grumpy when interrupted while listening to her radio. That seems more as a pretext however as the door to the room is then promptly locked. As it's getting pretty dark, the protagonist completely unaware of the danger that he's in decides to ask the old man for some light so that he can finish the job. He finds himself locked in when he resourcefully finds a hair clip in his toolbox which he uses to unlock the room and get out. Outside he finds a suspicious note left on the table saying the old man and his wife are leaving for town and will be back later tonight, encouraging their progeny to take care of the young protagonist as soon as possible and not play with the food. This implies that they see the protagonist as nothing else but food for the hungry, cannibalistic creatures and perhaps even themselves. Now the spooked protagonist continues to explore the house and finds a doorknob to one of the rooms to be completely taken out, which may imply that he is not the first one to be kidnapped by this creepy family. He also finds a bookcase with two books separated from the others, one about human anatomy and another one about exotic cooking, which further implies the family must be really big on exotic meat. Subsequently, walking through the kitchen, he finds an arm on the chopping board. Interestingly, the old man was also missing an arm, which may be an indication that something in his house needs human meat in order to survive, and the parents are willing to sacrifice themselves in order to ensure the strange creature's survival, even if that means chopping parts of their body away or luring in potential victims. As he proceeds to the dining room, he finds a note on the table from February the 3rd. The note seems like a diary entry of a child written about his uncle Bob and Aunt Marie, mentioning Aunt Marie hasn't been feeling well lately and seemed disconnected from the real world while blankly staring at the radio and frequently turning the dial as if trying to find the right frequency. The description of Aunt Marie matches that of the old man previously said to the protagonist about his wife, indicating the old man and his wife must be Bob and Marie Tucker. The entry diary from February the 4th mentions the child eventually managed to speak to his Aunt Marie about the radio and she was incredibly overjoyed as she was able to speak to a mysterious being through it. However, while confronted to what the it she spoke to was, her smile quickly fades away. The protagonist then finds the mysterious radio mentioned in the diary's entry with the strange sounds being emitted. Spooked, he promptly leaves the room and proceeds to explore other parts of the house, all while hearing strange noises and creaks coming from different rooms. In the bathroom, he finds a mysterious key which helps him open the door to the bedroom upstairs. There, the protagonist finds another diary's entry from February 15th, 25th, and March 3rd. In the diaries, it's mentioned the child notices his uncle and his entire family starting to behave really strangely as they clump together around the radio each night and proceed listening to it. The child also mentions his uncle Bob came back one day with the front of his truck completely destroyed, bloodied, and covered in chunks of something strange, as if it hit someone or something on the road. The entry to the laundry room located in the basement was also blocked off as if this 
family was trying to hide something from him. But even though scared, the child seems determined to get to the bottom of this. After further inspection of the house, the protagonist finds another entry from April 14th, which talks about Aunt Marie and Uncle Bob going on their routine trip. The author also mentions another person that is living in the house, Philip, who may be perhaps Marie and Bob's son. Philip, however, demonstrates strange behavior similarly to his mother by locking himself in the basement every day precisely at 8.45 and not coming out until the next day. Utterly perplexed, the author of the notes admits to snooping around the radio in order to find answers to what may be it on the radio their family constantly refers to. Upon twisting the dial on the radio, the child admits to hearing strange animalistic sounds but is unable to understand what the it is saying. The sounds the author of the diary is referring to must be the same sounds the protagonist heard while changing frequency on the radio. While exploring the downstairs living room, the protagonist finds another entry from May 13th where the child describes happy moments spent with Daisy, a family pet. He quickly notices, however, that Daisy's breath smells of something truly disgusting and wonders what does his family feed her. On May 20th, another entry reveals the family completely lost their minds, starting to cut off parts of their bodies with a cleaver knife, which forced the child to pack the bags and prepare to leave their family, hoping that they can come back with help. Next, the protagonist finds a room with a little dog in it, which is most likely Daisy, mentioned in the entry from May 13th. Daisy doesn't seem very friendly and quickly alerts the house of an intruder. A tall person comes out of nowhere and attacks the protagonist while striking at him with a knife, who then fortunately manages to escape the attacker. Managing to flee, the protagonist finds himself in a basement where he finds a bookcase which most likely blocks the access to the laundry room as mentioned by the child in one of the diary's entries. Soon enough, the protagonist finds a way to move the bookcase, which reveals a hidden room in which Philip enjoyed spending his night. There are shackles on the walls and a lot of blood all around, while in the center there's a mutilated body of an unidentified victim lying on what looks like an autopsy table. The protagonist finds a list hanging on one of the walls which tells how to properly ration body parts and dispose of the victim's belongings. The family meant to consume limbs of the victims while Daisy ate victim's bones, which may explain the terrible odor the author of the diary previously complained about coming from Daisy. Interestingly, the organs of the victim, meant to be thrown into the pit to feed the mysterious it previously mentioned by the child, which seems to be the cause of the family's weird obsession with human flesh. Soon enough, the protagonist finds an entry to the attic. While exploring it, he finds a door with a padlock on it, which upon entering the coat, he enters a small room with tally markings on the wall, indicating 63 days and another diary entry from May 21st. One day after, the author decides to run away, indicating that he didn't manage to escape at all. On the other hand, the child mentions on the night he woke up locked up in the attic by his own family who are now trying to force him to cut off his own arm. Another entry from May 24th indicates the child was starving while his family was trying to feed him strange types of meat which he refused to eat. After days of starvation, the child finally gave in and admitted to eating strange meat on May 26th. Almost a month later on, on June 20th, Aunt Marie came to wish the child happy birthday and gifted him a rope which completely broke him as he knew that's the only way he could free himself. A few days later, the child started considering cutting off his limbs in hopes that will convince his family to let him go. On the table and bed, there's a blood splatter and the mattress seems to be smelling like rotten meat which suggests how tragically the child eventually gave in. The protagonist grabs the rope left by Aunt Marie in the attic and eventually manages to get down to the basement, where he finds a dark pit that seems to be leading through the sewers out. He drops the rope down in an attempt to escape, but the mysterious man dressed in black, which is most likely Philip, based on the note left by the elderly couple encouraging their progeny to take care of the protagonist. 
Philip catches the young protagonist off guard and makes him fall down the pit. Even though seriously hurt, the protagonist manages to survive the fall and proceeds exploring the sewers for the way out. The place seems like the pit Philip was referring to in the instructions on how to ration flesh and how to feed it. While walking through this moist, dingy place, the protagonist finds red, fleshy organic matter imitating strange sounds like those that could be previously heard on the radio. He also finds what resembles eggs which are breeding from flesh around them. The protagonist noticing one of the eggs is being catched, presumes that it is where the it the family kept obsessing about came from. Now more petrified than ever, trying to find a way out, the protagonist suddenly gets jumped by it and doesn't survive the attack. After dropping down the pit, the protagonist finds himself in the sewers once more. This time, he manages to find a ladder which allows him to climb out of this forsaken house. Beaten and shattered, he walks slowly down the dark, empty road when he hears a car approaching him. It turns out to be a police car and the friendly police officer offers to take the young protagonist to the hospital so that his wounds can be looked at. Now calmer and having a sense of security, the protagonist gets inside the car, but the police officer Sir promptly turns on the radio, which emits the same creepy noises that could be heard while inside Tucker's house. I'll turn on the radio. You're safe now. It can be presumed that the police officer was also influenced by the strange noises of it coming from the radio, which made them crave human meat, just like in case of the Tuckers. So in reality, this is probably not a good ending, with it being another bad ending for the protagonist, probably ending up in Tucker's house, being fed to it. The monstrous it seems to have specific powers which allows it to control and influence people who listen to the strange noises that it emits. As it seems to enjoy human meat, it also influences people that listen to it and makes them crave human flesh as well. Even though Tucker's family lost their minds in some sense, they didn't seem to fully lose their sense of self as even though they acted strangely and kept their nephew locked up in the attic, they still deep down cared enough to feed him and spare his life in contrast to all the other poor individuals they managed to lure into their farm. So to put it simply, it seems to be some sort of a monstrous alien entity that can control people's minds to some degree, making them crave human meat so it can survive as well. In a way, acting as a parasite that can feed off the remainder of what is left over. And that's about it for this video, folks. I truly hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host, Dar, and I will catch you on another video. Have a good day.